todos. Esse é mais uma iniciativa da TV SBU. Eu estou aqui acompanhado do Dr. Quentin Clemens. Para quem não conhece o Dr. Quentin Clemens, é um líder na área de pesquisa a respeito da dor pélvica crônica e cistite intersticial. Ele é um dos, dos líderes do, Rap, do MAP Group, que vem mapeando e fazendo uma série de, de pesquisas recentes e importantes avanços nesta área. Uh, Dr. Quentin, I would like to thank you first of all for your time, and we all know that you are a great expert in the area of bladder pain syndrome and interstitial cystic. We have learned a lot with all of uh, papers in the last years and all the improvement uh, it has been made. So I would like to ask you, in the future years, what is the best perspective we can have about this issue? Sure. Well, um, thanks for having me. And um, I would say that what we're moving towards is doing a better job of separating types of IC into different groups. I think everyone realizes now that having Hunter ulcers is an important subgroup because we treat those patients differently. But some more data that's come out is related to uh, features like having widespread pain as an example, where uh, there's some data to, su to suggest that patients who have IC plus widespread pain do better with more systemic therapies as opposed to therapies focused on the bladder. So that's one area, and I think more research will show us other important subgroups of patients so that we can uh, treat them based on those characteristics rather than try the same therapies on everyone, which often doesn't work very well. When, when you look to the, to the available treatments, especially the, the, the blood insulations. There are a lot of questions about the cocktails yes. and all the formulas yes. and how to compare these, these, these results and how to, to say to the patients what's the best to do with yeah. it. Do you think in the, the next years we are going to have some questions, some questions, on, some answers about what type of cocktail or what type of uh, blood insulation is the best for any kind of phenotype of patients? Probably not, to be honest. And um, the reason is I'm not aware of any efforts to actually do those types of studies. I think the good news is it seems as though most of the cocktails that are used, whether they have lidocaine, whether they have DMSO, whether they have hyaluronic acid, seem to work pretty well. And so, uh, so I think that, I guess the message would be, if you have something you're used to using, uh, it's okay to continue it because they all seem to help some patients, but of course, having different options. So maybe if you try one of the cocktails and it doesn't work, thinking about trying another one. But to try to sort out the difference between them, um, I'm not aware of any studies ongoing right now. And so I just have to be honest, I'm not sure in a few years if we will know a lot more. Hopefully we will, but uh, time will tell. So we have had so much improvement in the last years, maybe five years from now, 10 years from now, you're going to have a lot of answers to, to... Yeah, I think so. I think it'll maybe be in a variety of areas, some of which will surprise us. Uh, so it's exciting. Okay. We're looking forward to see it. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.